Welcome to this video on how to set up Mirror 42 for ServiceNow. Mirror 42 for ServiceNow is a KPI dashboard and KPI scorecard solution that allows you to analyze the historical performance of key performance indicators and metrics that you connect and collect out of ServiceNow. Um, the product works as follows. We generate the metrics that you want to date stamp and timestamp. Um, we then collect the data every day. We maintain the metrics history and allow you to create formulas, set targets, so that you can drive improvement programs. You can then access these key performance indicators through scorecards, mobile apps, or dashboards directly in the ServiceNow UI. Let's take a look at that. So here we are inside ServiceNow, um, and as you can see, there's a Mirror 42 app installed in the ServiceNow environment, and you can load multiple dashboards. Now each dashboard can be assigned to different users in your organization. We'll focus on the incident management dashboard for now because that's the dashboard that we will be building in just a second. The incident dashboard as you can see has multiple tabs and gives all kinds of information and insights such as mean time to resolve and kind of backlog analysis on uh, the uh, incident management process. End users can simply click on an indicator such as the open incidents and analyze the backlog select the date period, you know, move it to a bar chart, draw in a trend line, or switch from a daily view to a seven days running average. As you can see, the system is extremely quick and you can even break down the open incidents further by assignment group or by incident state, and so on and so on. Now, we call it actionable analytics because when I click on the details, if I want to know the underlying records and tickets incidents that are actually causing our backlog to grow, I can look for instance and launch the incidents not updated in the last 30 days. And my end users can now directly work on the tickets that caused this indicator to go over its target. This is the end result. You can have multiple dashboards and you can deploy them to any kind of user. Now let's take a look at how hard it is or how easy it is to set up this dashboard. So in order to do that, I need to go to a different environment. Um, I have an empty uh, Mirror 42 environment where we will now load the template for incident management. The template for incident management loads all the metrics uh, for incident management. I need to sign in again before I can do an install. Um, it will create the metrics for incident management and create the formulas for incident management and the KPIs as well as the dashboard that we've just seen. So it's a template. After we've loaded the template, we will need to uh, uh, make sure that the data is collected out of the ServiceNow uh, instance. As you can see, loading the template it goes very fast. Um, just with a couple of seconds, the, all, all the indicators have been defined. So here are all the indicators and key performance indicators and metrics related to incident management uh, being set up. I can take a look at open incidents in edit mode. I can also check whether the breakdowns that we just saw, assignment groups, priority, incident state, have been defined as well. We can do that in edit mode by looking at the breakdowns. And there they are. So we've predefined a couple of breakdowns. Now we do not know yet, because we haven't made a connection to the ServiceNow database, what the, as we call them, instances for those breakdowns are. What are the names of your work groups? Which priorities do you use? I can set a target. Well, let's set a target of you know, 60 open incidents uh, and hit save. So we're done. Um, we now are going to take a look at deploying the data collector to collect the data for these metrics. Uh, one more thing I want to show you, obviously the dashboard that we just saw in the live environment, um, we have a similar incident management dashboard, but as you can see, there's no data yet. So that's what we're going to do right now. So I'll launch the um, data collector. The data collector is a remote service uh, that can be installed, um, uh, hosted by us, 
uh, or it can be installed behind your firewall. So depending what your wishes are, if you would like to install it behind your firewall because ServiceNow is not hosted in the cloud but in a private cloud or hosted on your own data center, you can do so. Uh, you can also use the data collector to connect to other data sources than ServiceNow to enrich uh, your key performance indicator dashboard. I'm going to load configuration from file. Uh, there's a file called ServiceNow Incident which belongs to the template that we just loaded. And when I open it up, it will make a connection to uh, the Mirror 42 system with the APIs and it will also make a connection to the ServiceNow environment. And as you can see here, we will see all the metrics that we just set up in our environment uh, being defined in this particular group. Now if I go to open incidents, we can see the SQL statement that belongs to generating and connecting uh, and collecting the data for that particular information. So that's great, uh, but the first step would be to collect instances. Now this is done once, we need to set up our system so that we know which work groups you use for instance. And um, I've just launched this so that now it reaches out to ServiceNow and it will um, um, you know, collect all the assignment groups and priority statuses and create them, configure them in Mirror 42. Once that is done, the system is ready to start receiving data. As you can see, you know, it goes fairly quickly and it's about ready. There we are. I can now launch the data collector. The data collector now goes out and starts collecting all the data re related to all the indicators. Now this is done once a day. Um, please note how fast it goes. This is the only impact that our solution has on your production server. And please compare that with traditional reporting systems. That was it. We're done. We've collected data for all your key performance indicators in your reports. So let's go back to the scorecards and see if the data is already there. Here we are. We see the first data flowing in, the system is still processing and uh, you'll see that if I probably switch back and forth the calculated fields and the formulas are already there. Open incidents 59, you know, it's already there. Um, and uh, when I launch it, uh, you will also see that the breakdowns will be there um, where you know, we'll see you know, all the incidents have been open for longer than 30 days. So there you go. So done. Now how hard is it to tailor this and to, for instance, add a metric? Let's create a metric from scratch, not from a template. So I'm going to create a metric called open changes and I want to know how many changes are open at a given day. Obviously, I'm measuring here in numbers. If the scores go up, it's a bad thing. And I would like to have 20 um, uh, as, a, as a target for this particular uh, indicator. I can get give some other more, more information uh, and descriptions and details. But for now, this is OK. I'm going to save it. And we've now created a new metric. I can add more details such as which aggregates do I would like to have. I would like to analyze it with a seven days running average, uh, for instance, in a 30 day running average. Um, and then I hit save. Now, once this is done, I go back to the data collector again. So I go back to my data collector. I open it up again and I hit refresh. You'll now see when I scroll up that open incidents or open changes is there in red and it has an alert because it hasn't been defined yet. So we need to define the SQL that belongs to collecting open changes. Now I already prepared something. Um, here it is. So I'll simply copy and paste that. save it. I'll test it. Nine open changes. So great, we've now defined it. It's no longer red. Um, and I can save this file. And now I will launch the collect scores again. 
it will override all the scores that we just collected. Um, it will go out and it will you know, make another round of collecting the data. And there we go. Again, please note how long or better said how, <laughs> how short, this, short of a process this is. And this is again all the impact that our system has on your production environment. And it's done. So now if I go back to my scorecards and I hit the refresh button over here, uh, you'll see that open changes uh, will be added. And there it is. Open changes, 9, and the color code is green because it is obviously better than 20 and above target. you also see that now all the other formula-based indicators have been calculated. So let's go to the dashboard and in the dashboard we only have one data point obviously so not a lot of trending information yet but if we do this consecutively every day you'll see a lot of trending information but now let's see how hard it is to add the open changes to this dashboard so I go to edit mode I create a new tab call that change Oops. select the tab hit add content look up my open changes there it is and you know, since I only have one score, I would like to see the latest score. Um, and maybe I'll add it again, open changes. Um, there it is. And add it as a gauge. Now, there you go. Done. We've just created a dashboard and we've added change management information to this dashboard. So once these dashboards are done, you can then deploy them in ServiceNow, which is another tutorial that I'm happy to share with you. So what you've seen so far is how easy it is to set up a dashboard uh, and to, to add new metrics uh, to uh, the KPI dashboard system. Um, and uh, we've also seen how powerful the dashboards are because they are embedded inside ServiceNow, tightly integrated, so we make the information actionable. Thank you.